So what we're going to do first is build a quick and dirty public key infrastructure, a PKI. And you know what? When I say quick and dirty, I mean like red flashing lights and warning sirens and all of that kind of stuff. This is in no way intended to be a lesson on how you should build a production worthy PKI. I promise this is like even a lesson in how not to do it in production. But don't turn off OK thinking like, well, what's the point? I'm only referring to this act of actually standing up a CA server and generating a few certificates. When it comes time to secure the cluster with those certificates, then we're back on good practices for production and the likes. The thing is, right, what we're doing here is standing up a bare bones PKI. Like, it's totally insecure and it's totally not how you do it in the real world. But likewise, it is absolutely enough to create the certificates that we're going to need to continue with the labs. So if you're following along, then you can follow along here too. And I suppose, actually, if you've already got access to a PKI and certificates and if you're already cool with this stuff, then yeah, rock on over to the next clip where we start copying certificates to nodes and the likes. Still here? All right then, let's go stand up this scandalously simple and scandalously insecure certificate authority server. Right, so what I've got here is a clean new Linux server. And like the rest, I've gone with Ubuntu 14.04 LTS. Now, it doesn't have to be. You can use a different version of Linux if you want, or you could even just use one of the nodes in the cluster for this. But I'm not, right? I figured as a teacher, using a separate server, it'd make diagrams and explanations a little bit clearer and simpler. Speaking of which, actually, yeah, go on, let's bring this back up here. And we'll stick our CA server up here. And it's this CA server, right, that's going to generate all of the keys that we'll need for the rest of this module. So we'll create a key pair for the CA itself. We'll copy the public key from that key pair onto every node in the infrastructure. This will make it so that every node in the infrastructure trusts the CA and importantly, any keys that it signs. Then we'll create a public private key pair for each and every node out there, plus a client that I should probably put on here. Right. After that's done, we'll copy the relevant keys to each node, ending up with something looking pretty much like this. Each node right having essentially two things, a copy of the CA's public key plus its very own unique key pair, so its own unique set of private and public keys. Now one thing to note before cracking on, all of these nodes in the infrastructure here can ping each other by name. So I've got name resolution configured, yeah? When I did this for the first time like ages ago, it didn't work without name resolution. Now, I've not checked whether that's changed of late. I honestly, I don't know, but I recommend you have name resolution set up, right? Okay, let's crack on. So we're on the CA server, yeah? And I'm in a new directory that I created to keep the certs we'll be generating. Well, the first thing is to create a key pair for the CA itself. We're effectively creating the CA here, yeah? And don't worry, I know I'm going to rattle through these commands because I don't want to spend too much time on it, but really don't worry, I've provided them all in the course notes so you don't need to worry about like trying to screen grab while I'm typing, yeah? So this command here creates a private key for the CA and we're calling it CA key. Then we want to create a public key based off of that and we're calling this one CA cert. Now you'll often hear public keys referred to as certs or certificates. And I'm just going to put some random stuff in here. In fact, sack that. Let's just crack on. Anyway, that's effectively our CA created. And I promise this is the last time I'll mention this, but it is not how it's done in the real world. There's like an insane amount of work that goes into protecting your root CA and its certificates in the real world. And we're obviously doing none of that here. Anyway, time to create and sign the keys for each of the nodes in the infrastructure. Again, I'm going to rattle through it, but you've got the commands in the course notes. So I'm going to start with manager one first. So first job, create a private key for it called manager one key. Then create a certificate signing request known as a CSR using that key. And be careful here to use the proper host name of your manager one. Yeah, in my lab, it literally is manager one. Now then. In order for this to work with IP addresses as well as host names, we're going to need to create an extension file. Now, we're doing this for manager one, so we just go echo subject alt name, then we say IP, and we're 10.0.1.5, and let's add in the loopback address as well. 
and we're going to write it out to, well, this doesn't really matter, it's arbitrary, right? But we'll say extfile.cnf. Okay. Now to process that CSR from two steps ago into a public key. Well, we're referencing the CSR file here, then the CA's public key, its private key, and we're telling it the name of the public key it's going to output. Then, of course, this bit that we're referencing here is that extension file that we just created. And that's it, right? Well, for Manager 1 at least. We've just created a unique public-private key pair for Manager 1. Now all that we need to do is rinse and repeat for Manager 2 and Manager 3, as well as nodes 1, 2 and 3. So that means the same commands again which you've got in the course notes, but update these sections here with the relevant details for each host. Now I'm going to warp space time here so you don't have to watch me do it like another five times. Okay, cool. Now then, we need to do pretty much the same for our Docker client, just with one slight difference. So if we run these two commands again, but for client... Okay, now we do need an extension file again, only this time the extension we want to use is client auth. No surprises for guessing, this means this certificate can be used for client authentication. Okay, well, let's process it into a public key again. And we're good. So if we clear this screen and then look in my working directory, you can see that I've got three files for each node, including the CA itself. So a public and private key pair plus the certificate signing request that we created as part of the process for each. Now, you know what? We don't need that CSR anymore. You can get rid of that if you want to. But looking back at our plan here, I make that our first two items completed and signed off. Alright then, time to go install them on each node. 